Hi guys, Jonathan here with, well, probably a pretty obvious weapon. If you've played a video game in the last 20 years, you probably know what the HK416 or 416 is. Uh, now, before we get into it, um, this is an episode brought to you by World of Guns, which is a, I don't want to call it a game, it, it, is, it has gamified elements, but I, I see it as more of a, a tool or an app um, for allowing you to disassemble, reassem reassemble, Analyze, um, X-ray, cut away. You can do, you can do all sorts of things with this thing, with all sorts of different weapons. And one of those is the HK416. We're going to be doing um, a series of these where we bring to you something that's not a mystery, like our normal series, but something that's uh, hopefully not run of the mill either. But something that is featured in that um, very useful app. Um, I used that when I was writing my broom handle Mauser book to to with the real thing as well, uh, to, to fully understand how it worked. And if I ever can't lay hands on a real gun, I go straight to that and, and figure out how it works. So fantastic, very happy to be working with, with those guys. So HK416, I used both names there, um, 416, 416. You can call it what you like, but um, given the origin of this thing as the HKM4, i.e. Heckler & Cox version of the M4 carbine, and the fact that the 16 is a nod to the M16, I call it the HK416, and so do they, as far as I know. So feel free to, to go with either. Um, HK, of course, obviously, <laughs> Heckler & Koch, uh, Obendorf, Germany, company with a, with a, a long heritage, post-war, uh, making especially the roller-delayed blowback family, the MP5, the G3, but then they got into um, more conventional rotating bolt, short piston, uh, short short stroke gas piston systems and that's critical to this thing and it's a very strange retroactive change to the AR-15 design uh, or the AR-10 actually from 1955 um, AR, uh, prototype AR-15s from 1957 if I remember rightly um, so they're, they're pretty old systems using that very revolutionary and very clever uh, what's often called direct gas impingement which is technically isn't but let's just have a quick look so that you understand where I'm going with the 416 in a moment this is an upper from a, a random <laughs> AR-15 from the collection and you can see this very bright shiny stainless steel tube here there are no gas parts on the front of this weapon uh, the Rangers the Royal Marines who are just receiving the new L403A1 uh, in the next few years uh, will be I suspect quite happy that they don't have to worry about additional gas parts up here because the clever part of the stoner system that the Knight's Armament <laughs> uh, rifles uh, follow is that the gas piston is the bolt. Something else you can look at in World of Guns is a conventional M16 and really understand how the back part of this bolt acts as the piston. It's so clever it dispenses with the additional gas parts, makes the whole weapon lighter and better balanced. It's what the AR-15, M16, M4 were designed around. As you can tell, I'm a purist, I'm a fan of it. I appreciate what HK have done with this. I'm not a huge fan of grafting that um, Tokarev gas piston from the 1930s, which is effectively what it is, back onto a perfectly good gun. <laughs> That's my, my take on that. Uh, so. Just to explain a bit further, so the gas comes off through this sight block, there's a hole drilled right through it, gets piped down this, this tube, and the gas emerges from the tube. So lit, that's why they call it direct gas, because it's pushing that high pot high pressure gas straight into the action, which is one of the reasons people get a bit concerned about this system. That then pipes into a hole here, and I'll show you this again with the HK 416 bolt in a moment, which is piped down into the middle of this bolt carrier where it forces, so that's the gun locked. These lugs lock into the splines on the inside of the barrel there. You can see, hopefully, lugs lock into holes, recesses, and it turns and it's locked shut, which you absolutely need in a firearm of this nature. And then gas pressure pulls those two bits apart. The bolt carrier comes to the rear to the point where it's unlocked and then it comes all the way back against the buffer spring. It's a genius system, if I may say, Mr. Stoner. Um, now, 
Why am I talking about grafting old technology onto here? Well, it's not the SVT40 that, that they took the gas piston system from. Exactly. That's where it started. This, what's in, in here under this handguard was taken from the G36 that H&K had already developed in the 90s uh, and is a very capable rifle in its own right. Uh, but it's designed around a short stroke gas piston system. So they've grafted that backwards onto their take on the AR-15. This is a program they're already working on in the early 2000s. They, they had heard the, com or had, there had been complaints made about how hot and dirty the inside of that AR-15 would get due to, it's not keeping the heat and the dirt up here, it's pushing it all back into the action. And there's this idea that it's, it's, putting dirt where it feeds and, and somehow that's a problem. I don't buy that personally, um, but I know some do. And in the very specific niche in which the American Special Operations Forces, Delta Force in particular, were trying to use their AR-15s, their um, Mark 18s to be precise, it was a problem. Uh, the Mark 18 at the time was burning through components like there's no tomorrow because it had a short barrel compared to this and everything was running hotter and faster. And so their solution was to purchase short barreled, 11 inch barreled HK416s. And that's, the, the rest is history basically. A bit like the MP5 at Prince's Gate in 1980 with the SAS, the HK416 with Delta Force, um, especially after the um, uh, Navy SEALs also got hold of it and they um, used this to kill Bin Laden. And that was it. The reputation absolutely cemented. Little bit of marketing. Not that this is a bad weapon. This is an excellent weapon. And the, the short stroke gas piston does make it more, more robust, more reliable for an awful lot of very rapid fire, even without having the short barrel. So it's not that there's no reason to buy a 416. It's just that the AR-15 with the, with the normal gas tube is absolutely fine for most purposes. So all that, all that out of the way, let's have a look at it. All of this is conventional AR-15. Uh, in fact, it's so, so M4 originally that as well as working with the government profile barrel with the step cutout on the barrel for grenade launchers, making it look very M4 and a 14 and a half inch barrel. This is the 16 inch heavy barrel. They also had tr traditional US issue AR-15, um, M4 furniture on the gun as well, making it look pretty much like an M4, especially with the quad rail handguard coming in at the time. So. It was still almost like an HKM4, but there's that diversion away with the gas system. So let me show you what I mean. All the controls are the same. They work the same way. Um, locking it open there, releasing the bolt. The selector is the same selector on this model as the AR-15, the M M4, M16. The selector markings are very HK. No bullets. One bullet, all the bullets. In fact, in this case, it's actually marked 30, which is the standard capacity, of course, of the AR-15 magazine. So really only the HK pictogram separating this from the AR-15 so far. Um, usually they come with a version of the HK, the excellent HK iron sights with the rotating drum. So 100, 200, 300. 400 and a folding front sight on the gas block which is going to become critical in a moment so that folds flat on the barrel if you're fitting an optic and you can use leave the the backup sight on there if you wish this has a an a1 birdcage style flash hider flash hiders barrels barrel lengths uh, whether there's a pivoting front sight lots of different hand guards all of that changes across the development of the 416 which is bewildering we are up to HK416 A8 now. And then there are national variations like the HK416F for the French uh, and so on and so forth. Super confusing. Um, I have, I believe, bottomed it all out. So if anyone desperately needs to know the history of the, the variants, uh, that can be uh, arranged somehow. But we haven't got time today to do that. Um, so let's get this thing in bits because and we'll be able to go so far World of Guns will let you go further. You can literally split this thing in half. We don't even have a cutaway AR-15 in this collection, weirdly. Um, that's what that is so good for, among other things. So uh, we'll just pop out bolt carrier. Charging handle is standard. Bring out our 
standard AR bolt group as well, just to show you the difference. I'll pop off the lower as well because uh, because it's easier, basically. Polymer dust cover on this one. Other, otherwise, the the upper is basically the same. This recess here, this is the outside of the recess of the cam pin, or the forging of the receiver that accommodates uh, that bit as it rotates to the side. That's literally all that bump is, if you've ever wondered. It's so that the space for a bit of the interior, a bit of the working parts to move into. That's all the bump is for. But on the HK, it's round, not square. Minor detail. Um, as they went along, HK added what they thought were improvements, and sometimes they were. Bit at the back there, um, on later models, this rail is, is full length all the way to the rear. On the early 416s, it has this distinctive drop here with no rail on it. We have the quad rail, which um, keys into the rail on the upper receiver. This version, you remove the, the pin and you slide off your quad rail handguard. So that's the original and probably still the most common HK416 handguard. Quite similar to the M4 quad rail from Knight's Armament or any others you care to mention, but a bit taller. And that incidentally is where that screw sits to lock the handguard in place. Very simple. The SA80, the L85A3, uses a very similar mounting block, mounting block under its HK handguard, by the way. And there is that gas system that I keep talking about. The lower is basically the same. Uh, set that aside. So much chunkier gas block. Uh, it doesn't have this classic triangle front sight on it. Uh, it could if they'd wanted it to, obviously. But And then we pop out the piston. And here's the big difference. So instead of the gas tube, sorry, that's the actual piston there. Instead of, uh, put that somewhere where it's not going to put grease on the table. <laughs> instead of a tube running from here to there and jetting hot gas into the action, it's basically just a G36, AR18, uh, and indeed L85 <laughs> gas system. Um, in fact, if you, if you compare, I won't strip this any further, but um, it's actually it's actually one one of the better ones in that it's uh, one that piston, that cup-shaped piston with rings on it to get a nice gas-tight seal, and that literally again check out World of Guns and run the animation of it firing, and you'll see that moves only a short distance. That's why they call it short strokes, not like the AK piston that comes way back. It's literally just thwack, and it thwacks this, and that thwacks the bolt carrier through that hole in the receiver. <laughs> So instead of, a, instead of the ether <laughs> smacking the bolt carrier or piping into the bolt carrier and separating the bolt like it's a piston, because it is, it's just smacking that. So they've turned the gas key that normally accepts the, the high pressure gas and pipes it into the, bolt, the body of the bolt carrier and mm. makes it all hot and dirty. Uh, instead of that, it's literally a, a steel rod impacting a steel face or key as they call it, and that drives the two things apart. Because again, you need the bolt carrier and the bolt to come apart from each other to unlock from the, from the barrel, from the breech, and then to come to the rear to extract, eject, and come forward again to load the next round. Again, you can see all of that in World of Guns in a way that, I, I mean, I don't know why I'm bothering to explain it to you. Go to World of Guns and try it. Now you might notice there there's a spring that isn't there on the conventional ARs. So when you reinstall this in an AR, you need to give it a flick. Don't need to do that with the HK. Now that's largely to do with, they had to add a firing pin safety to this thing, which is what that is on the back of the not gas key. <laughs> this thing that lifts up. So for as long as that is in the down position, the hammer, hammer, comes flying forward through this slot and hits the back of the firing pin unless everything is properly located and aligned pushing that firing pin safety up the firing pin can't go forward and fire the gun now this is a, a, a long-standing issue with the AR-15 back to its earliest times of slam fires or light strikes um, if you didn't 
address that. Now, the original fix was to just lighten the firing pin so it wasn't as heavy and you weren't getting the inertia. HK deemed it necessary to add in a mechanical safety. So you've made the bolt cap group a little bit more complicated. The, the, the more, more serious issue, I, I'm told by Mr. Knight himself from Knight's Armament, uh, is that you're because you're thwacking this, you are always causing a tilt or a twist that means it's not going straight back, which is always making it less efficient. The gas here comes in, separates the two parts, as we've discussed, and then the whole thing comes straight back. There's minimum friction, which is great in any machine. So this has a bit more. Now you just dial up the, the gas with a bigger hole and it drives past that, no problem. It is a robust, reliable system. It's just, you know, in some, in some circles, that's not deemed necessary. Um, it does depend on what you're trying to do with the rifle. So that's the heart of the system. So much of this is standard AR-15. Um, over time, they've diverged more. So uh, the standard base model is still really the HK416A5, um, which we don't have as yet. The Bundeswehr is, has adopted the A7 and the A8 in, in different uh, roles. And at the A8 will be the new standard rifle of the Bundeswehr, of the German army, replacing that G36. And we won't get into that controversy. Uh, so this has been wildly successful. France, um, uh, Norway, notably. Uh, which actually brings me to, I had to puzzle all of this out to figure out what the heck we have. What actually is this? Well, marked on here is HK416D. And early on, there was an HK416C, which did in fact stand for compact, I believe it was, rather than carbine. That didn't go anywhere. That wasn't put into production. Short-barreled 416s did come about later. By short, I mean super short. But D doesn't mean, well, anything um, other than defense. So D, uh, HK Defense was the branch of Heckler & Koch that designed this. And the D, I have been informed, was included on the drawings by accident. So you see HK416D, you think it's a specific model, it's very associated with the Navy SEALs and Delta Force because they had models marked HK416D. It actually doesn't mean anything. Uh, it was dropped quietly later on. Um, I forget which model even it was dropped on. So ignore that. Uh, they're not marked with A1, A2, A3, A4, etc. Near as I can tell, ours is an A2. There's a, an oblong slot in the bottom of the bolt carrier to allow water to drain out from inside of the bolt carrier. Now, why is that important? Uh, and I believe that's what makes ours an HK416A2, technically. Um, what's called over the beach, and there were demonstrations of this. This is still quite early on in the 416's history, so 2005, 2006. Ours is from about 2006, or, or is from 2006. Um, the idea was with small caliber rifles, and although the AR-15 um, has a relatively powerful cartridge, it's small caliber, you have, you have a, an effect where the water won't easily be pushed out of the bore by the pressure in the bullet coming up behind it. It can overcome the, the mechanical strength of the barrel and blow it up, essentially. It doesn't blow the barrel up, it blows backwards, blows the bolt carrier up, blows the magazine out of the gun, and you don't have a working gun. You probably still have working hands, but you don't have a working gun. So um, the A2 was that was that improvement essentially. And the, the Norwegian HK416 is, with a couple of tweaks for their requirements, the same as this, um, the 416N. So you have a parallel system of letters for country uh, designations, and the countries will then have their own designations um, for, 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 for their military, for that rifle. And then you have the in-house designation that's also HK416, that is A1, A2, A3, all the way up to A. Eight. You see the confusion. Hopefully that's of interest. I can't help but feel that World of Guns is going to do a better job for you. So please do go ahead and check out the 416 over at World of Guns. It's virtually identical to ours. It just has the 14 and a half inch US government profile barrel like an M4. There you are guys. Probably the single most successful derivative of the AR-15, the HK416. Um, again, you can find this and lots of other firearms in World of Guns, so please do check that out. We really appreciate them working with us on this video and future videos. Otherwise, same applies. Always remember the, uh, the website, the social media channels, 
um, work that we do over at the GameSpot channel as well. If you feel moved to donate to us uh, as a public museum, we really appreciate that as well. Links also via the website. But uh, in any case, we'll see you again next week.